And that again, and that again is not the answer, but it, over time it will have a beneficial effect. We've got to go to wind and tide and solar and all those things that you love and familiar with, but we also have to go to nuclear power. My friends, uh, it takes five years in Europe today to build a nuclear power plant. The best estimates in the United States of America are 10, but we don't even know because it's been like 30 years since we began one. So nuclear power is clean and it's safe. The United States Navy has sailed ships around the world for 60 years with nuclear power plants on them, and we've never had an accident. So we have to store, uh, excuse me, we have to store spent nuclear fuel and we have to reprocess it. And Americans can meet this challenge. We can meet this challenge head on. We have never met a challenge as a nation that we haven't been able to meet and overcome. And this is another one. I believe that when Jack Kennedy said we have to put a man on the moon, uh, we did it in a shorter time than anyone ever thought that we could. It's because Americans were united. And there's a lot more we can we can talk about that. Finally, I'd like to talk to you about peace. Peace is a precious thing, and there are places in the world where not only they don't enjoy that, that wonderful experience, but in some places it's been many years since they have. And we, the United States of America, are in two wars, and we're in a struggle against radical Islamic extremism. Things are tough in Afghanistan now. I'm sure you have been seeing that the difficulties we have in Pakistan and a resurgence of the Taliban in certain areas and cooperation uh, is going on amongst them, that things are very tough. Fortunately, if there's some good news out of Afghanistan, is that there's a lot of people there helping us and a lot of foreign countries, other countries, including our friends north of the border, the Canadians, who are also serving with us there. And we value and treasure this, the service and sacrifice of countries that are allies and friends who are there with us. And uh, we face the transcendent challenge of radical Islamic extremism. They want to destroy everything we stand for and believe in. And they are a malignant evil. It's hard to comprehend how evil they are. Some weeks ago in, in Baghdad, Al-Qaeda took two mentally disabled young women, put suicide vests on them, sent them into a marketplace, and by remote control detonated those suicide vests. It's hard to imagine how, how the, the transcendency of this evil and malignancy that, that it poses for us. But I'm happy to tell you, it's been long and it's hard and it's tough and it's frustrating and Americans have sacrificed a great deal. But thanks to this great general and the new strategy of the surge, we are winning in Iraq. Now, a lot of people don't like to say that, but we are winning there. Now, it's long and it's hard and it's tough. And the enemy is not defeated. The enemy is not defeated. But in, in the major cities in Iraq today, Mosul, Baghdad, and Basra, the Iraqi government and military, Iraqi with U.S. support, not American military with Iraqi support, but vice versa, are controlling these places. And we just saw in the last couple of days, they're not done. There was another huge, terrible explosion uh, in Baghdad that killed a lot of people. So they're not done. If they were done, I'd say come home immediately. And, this, and what we've won is fragile there. It's fragile. But I just want to remind you that the, that, the, that the consequences of failure, if we'd have set a timetable for withdrawal and withdrawn the way that Senator Obama wanted us to do, there would have been chaos. There would have been the conflicts between different factions. There would have been al-Qaeda establishing a beachhead. Iranian influence would have expanded dramatically. A lot of very bad things would have happened, and it would have, I think, very likely have been a wider war, which then would requ have required us to go back. Now, that's my belief. And I believe the, the benefits of success are a stable and democratic government, functioning poorly, but functioning. It is a reduction in Iranian influence. It is, a, uh, a, it is encouragement to other nations in the region and it has a very beneficial overall effect. So I am confident that we are succeeding, but we come home according to the facts on the ground, the recommendations of great General Petraeus, and how that situation evolves, not setting artificial timetables. And my friends, we will come home. We will come home, but we will come home with victory and honor, and not in defeat. And that's what we can do in Iraq. So, so, 
let me just say, I'm humbled by having the nomination of the party of Abraham Lincoln and Theodore Roosevelt and Ronald Reagan to be president of the United States. I am honored to, for a long time, to have had the support of this great governor and his beautiful wife, the brains of the outfit, Mary, as many of you know. And so, let me just say, and by the way, Cindy is, is not here. She is uh, in Vietnam as we speak. She's been associated with an organization, which is a wonderful organization called Operation Smile, where they go around and, and for literally very little expense because of the volunteers, they uh, operate on children with cleft palates in third world countries. So she's been doing that for many years, and I'm, and I'm, I'm sorry that she's not here, but I think she's doing uh, a, a very worthy task uh, today, particularly, and maybe she'll get a chance to get up and see my old residence. I don't know if she will <laughs> or not. But, uh, but I, I just want to say that Operation Smile, and there's a group of young people here tonight who I always recognize when I see them. They're an organization called One. And if you would stand, and so we could just see you, all of the folks from One here uh, tonight. And I want to thank you for your organization. These are a group of over two million young people who have volunteered to, uh, to uh, go to third world countries in Africa, combat AIDS, HIV AIDS, malaria, and other things. And by the way, they were inspired to some degree by Bono, who is a great guy, right? <laughs> and and uh, so I want to thank you. You're what America is all about. And could I conclude <laughs> by saying, By the way, they are, a, they are a nonpartisan organization, you want me to add. Um, but this is what America is all about, serving a cause greater than your self-interest. That's what I want to do. That's what I believe I can inspire a generation of Americans to do. And I believe there's nothing nobler. And we will disagree from time to time. That's why we have town hall meetings. And we will not agree on every issue. But I want to tell you, my life and my experience and my appreciation for this nation, which I really uh, grew to love long ago and far away, means, motivates me to tell you that you can be sure of one thing. I will always put my country first. I thank you for being here, and thank you, and I'd like to respond to any questions or comments that you might have. Thank you very much. By the way, the governor and I were just talking, this is a wonderful historic building, and in 1898, they had to ask for some extra money from the federal government. So it's a great place, uh, <laughs> but, it's a, but it's, a, it's a wonderful establishment, and, and I'm honored to be in a, in a place that has been a, a place where people have found justice and also other services to the population. Thank you. Yes, sir? You got it. Thank you. Uh, Senator McCain, I've, I've uh, really admired you for many years and uh, uh, was very interested in your campaign eight, eight years ago when you ran for president. Um, I've been a little bit frustrated this time around because it seems like there's a, there's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet and other places, and I'm not sure that we're getting the real John McCain story out there. Um, I would like to learn more about both candidates, um, the, the actual positions on things, and instead I'm hearing things like uh, they're calling you Bush the third, and they, they're, not, they're not being fair. And I, I'm just wondering what can you do or what can your campaign do to show that you've got this history of bipartisanship, you reach out across the aisle, you do things that aren't necessarily popular with your party, you do things which I feel are in the interest of the American people, and I, I'd like to hear more of that from your campaign. 